Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video, I'll be going through five more of some of the largest saltwater fish in the world, and this is now number three in the series. So I've already been through 10 fish that are thought to be some of the largest saltwater fish in the world. But now that's out of the way, we'll head over to the Atlantic Ocean, as we have the Atlantic Halibut. Now the Halibut is what's known as a flatfish, as they spend most of their time on the ocean floor, laying against the substrate. And to do this, they have very compressed bodies, and two eyes on one side of their face. But Halibut don't always look this way, as in the larval stage, they look like like many other baby fish, but eventually one of the eyes migrates over to the right side of its body. And even though their flat body makes them look quite sluggish, they're actually quite strong swimmers and are able to migrate long distances. But when they're migrating, you're very unlikely to see them, as they're normally found at depths of around 50 to 2,000 meters. So the only chance you'll really get of seeing them is if you go deep sea diving. But in these deep waters, the halibut is a predator, and they're known to primarily feed on fish such as cod and haddock, but they're also known to eat crustaceans such as lobsters and clams, and in some very rare cases, they're known to ascend from the depths and try and hunt seabirds. But the halibut is not quite at the top of the food chain, as they're preyed upon by seals, Greenland sharks, and dogfish. And although they might not look very tasty, they are highly valued food fish. But the Atlantic halibut is very susceptible to overfishing, as the halibut is a very slow growing fish, as they only reach around 7 to 9 inches after their first year of life. But because of their popularity and their vulnerability in the wild, they've attracted investment in fish farming, as Canada, Norway, Iceland, Chile, and and the UK have all started farming Atlantic halibut. But in the wild, if they're not taken out by large predators, they can reach some massive sizes, as they're thought to reach a maximum length of around 4.7 meters, or around 15 feet. And at this size, they weigh around 320 kilograms, or around 710 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a Caribbean manatee, or a muskox. And that's a pretty impressive size for such a goofy looking fish. But for our next species, we'll stay in the Atlantic Ocean, as we had the Atlantic bluefin tuna. Now this fish is native to both the western and eastern Atlantic Ocean, as well as parts of the Mediterranean Sea. Now the Atlantic bluefin is a close relative to the other bluefin tuna, the Pacific bluefin and the southern bluefin, but the Atlantic bluefin is the largest by a long way. And when most people think of tuna, they just think of them as a food fish, but it's easy to forget that they're highly adapted predators, as they have some of the best eyesight of any bony fish, and they're almost built like muscly torpedoes. And this muscly streamlined body means that they can move almost 45 miles per hour through the water, and they put this speed to good effect, normally feeding on large shoals of fish in packs, such as herring, mackerel, and even eels. And as they can grow to such large sizes, they're only really fed upon by the largest of billfish, sharks, and toothed whales. But their popularity as a food fish has led to a drastic decline in their population, as over the last 40 years, the numbers have declined by 72% in the Eastern Atlantic, and by 82% in the Western Atlantic. But even though their numbers are plummeting, people aren't going to stop fishing for them, as they're highly prized in Japan, with the largest tuna ever sold, costing a whopping $3.1 million, or around £2.5 million. So unfortunately, the future doesn't look great for this large fish, but if given the chance to reach maturity, they can reach a maximum size of around 3.7 meters, or around 12 feet long. And at this size, they weigh around 680 kilograms, or around 1,500 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around six giant pandas, or around the same weight as an American bison. So hopefully more can be done to help out this highly adapted predator. For our next species, we'll head over to the Indo-Pacific, as we have the giant grouper. Now in last week's episode, I featured the goliath grouper, which in itself can reach some pretty impressive sizes, but the giant grouper, or Queensland grouper, gets even larger. Now this species is normally found in shallow waters, normally around coral reefs or shipwrecks. And even though it's an extremely large predator, they're known as being quite shy fish, and will often swim away from divers if given the opportunity. And although it looks like a very boring fish in maturity, young giant groupers are some of the prettiest fish in our oceans, as they look very much like a bumblebee with their black and yellow coloration. And like many other grouper species, they are born female and as they mature eventually turn into a male. And juvenile giant groupers are normally found in brackish waters, as they provide a good environment to hide from sharks, and eventually when they're large enough, they can venture into fully marine conditions. And like many other grouper species, they are opportunistic ambush predators, feeding on a variety of fish, as well as small sharks, juvenile sea turtles, crustaceans and mollusks. But because of their sluggish nature, they're an easy target for fishermen, and they are a highly valued food fish. And they're thought to have a vulnerable but stable population in the wild, but they aren't helped by the fact that the gallbladder and stomach are used in traditional Chinese medicine. But given the chance, they can reach massive sizes, as they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 2.7 meters, or around 8.8 .8 feet. And at this size, they weigh around 400 kilograms, or around 880 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a hooded seal, or a moose. And that's a very respectable size for the largest grouper in the 
the world. Before our next species, we'll head over to the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans, as we have the swordfish. Now the swordfish is a highly migratory predatory fish, and is equipped with a long flat pointed bill. And just like the previously featured blue marlin, they use this to knock other fish off balance and swipe through large shoals of fish. And just like the tuna, the swordfish is built for speed, as their bills cut through the water, making them very streamlined. And in the temperate oceans, they can reach speeds of up to 60 miles per hour, making them among the fastest fish in the ocean. And because of their speed and size, they are very few natural predators, as they're only really fed upon by marine mammals such as killer whales, and extremely fast species of sharks, such as mako sharks. But their long sharp bill also makes them a difficult prey item, as multiple sharks have washed up on beaches, with swordfish bills embedded in their heads. As there was a thresher shark that washed up on Tunisia, and a blue shark that washed up on the coast of Spain. It's unknown if this behaviour is deliberate, or maybe because they go after the same prey items, and the sharks got stabbed by mistake. But it's no wonder that these stab wounds proved fatal, as they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 4.5 metres, or around 15 feet. And at this size, they weigh around 650 kilograms, or around 1,430 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around 5 warthogs, or around 6 Asiatic black bears. So although it's not the largest fish in the ocean, I think it has the best weapon. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to the tropical oceans, as we have the tiger shark. Now in this series, I'm slowly working my way through the sharks, and the tiger shark is definitely one of the largest out there. And as well as being very large, they are also quite dangerous, as they're known to have the widest food spectrum of all sharks. As they feed on the normal shark foods such as fish and crustaceans, but have also been known to go after birds, turtles, sea snakes and dolphins. And there's many stories of them eating discarded rubbish and even dead bodies. And if you want to hear the story of a shark that started a murder mystery, check out my video on shark attack statistics. And to feed on this wide variety of food, they have very specialised teeth, as they're almost hooked, and they're designed to be able to both hold on to prey and tear through even the thickest of hides. And a female tiger shark can give birth to up to 30 pups. And this is especially impressive, as these pups weigh around the same as a newborn baby. But when these baby sharks mature, they're thought to reach a maximum size of around 5 metres, around 16.4 feet. And at this size, they're thought to weigh around 900 kilograms, or 2,000 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around two pygmy sperm whales, or around three humpback dolphins. And that's a really impressive size for the trash can of the seas. But that's about it for this video. If you have any other suggestions for fish that you think should be on this list, then let me know down in the comments below, and I'll try and feature them in the next video. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. And until next time, goodbye.